And these are the Jupyter Files for Wednesday, July 21st. My name is Brian Lunduke. Hey everybody, uh, we've got a uh, an awful lot to go over today. Uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of big stories. A lot of uh, a lot of good stuff overall. Uh, so uh, so we're gonna kind of jump right into it. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen any of these or not, uh, but there is a man. Uh, wh where is this guy at? Uh, there is a man in Bosnia who has uh, uh, who has a house there, uh, a nice little home, and it has been hit. I kid you not, six times by meteorites. Uh, that's right. The this man is claiming that uh, that his house. Uh, is actually uh, his, his uh, uh, is actually uh, being targeted by aliens. Uh, the I really uh, there's no other way to, to to assume it. I mean, I mean, why else would your house get hit by six times by uh, by meteorites? And this isn't just six times over the course of say a hundred years or so. This is six times in the last three years. Uh, so so much so that he's actually had to reinforce. Uh, the roof of his home with a steel girder, um, that's uh, which is just just plain awesome, if you ask me. Um, doesn't sound like anyone's been hurt yet, uh, but uh, they have uh, they have taken the the meteorites and uh, taken them down to uh, Belgrade University uh, to uh, some theoretically some, some experts there. I, I haven't been able to find out exactly who those experts would be or what they would be experts in. For all I know, they could be expert janitors, but. But their experts at Belgrade University have confirmed that all of the rocks that he has produced so far are, in fact, meteorites. So either this guy uh, collects meteorites and thinks it would be really, really funny uh, to claim that his house is being targeted by meteorites, or his house is actually being pelted to a ridiculous degree, to a statistical improbable degree, statistically improbable degree by meteorites. Uh, now he actually says uh, that uh, that the trajectory is no accident. Uh, he claims, ob and I quote, "I am obviously being targeted by aliens." And he goes on to say, um, "I don't know what I have done to annoy them, but there is no other explanation that makes sense. The chances of being hit by a meteorite is so small that getting hit six times has to be deliberate. If you rule out the possible, then the impossible must be true." I. I can't argue with that. Um, for some reason, I don't think if aliens wanted to take you out that they would simply hurl rocks at you from space. Uh, I'd like to think that if there are aliens uh, in orbit around our planet uh, and they greatly disliked you, uh, Mr. Guy in Bosnia, that, uh, that they, maybe they'd have some cool ray gun. Uh, something better than uh, a couple of rocks, or uh, perhaps, perhaps more likely, they know that you're a rock collector, and they are trying to help you out because they like you so much. Here's here's some rocks. Uh, the other side of it is, uh, if they are targeting you, uh, that is some pretty phenomenal accuracy. How exactly do you throw a rock through the entire atmosphere of a planet and have it land on one? house six times six times in a row so so there's there's two ways we can think about this here one is that they have uh, astounding rock throwing accuracy uh just even with uh wind and uh and uh various uh you know thermal activities in the atmosphere that would kind of buffet the rock and kind of move it away from the house um or two They've been hurling a nonstop barrage of rocks at Bosnia. Uh, maybe Bosnia in in general is being targeted, and there's there's more stories like this where you know people are just getting pelted with meteorites, and this guy is just the first to come forward. I I, I have no idea, but it just seems kind of crazy uh, that this guy has been hit six times in uh, in three years. That's that's two meteorites per year. At that point, I'd start to get a little bit a uh, little bit nervous myself, to be honest. If I if my house if my house was being bombarded every six months like clockwork with a meteorite honestly I'd assume that aliens were attacking me too uh, and even if I knew logically that, that aliens probably weren't attacking me with rocks 
I would tell everyone I knew that aliens were attacking me with rocks because let's be honest, that's awesome. Uh, so, uh, you know, hats off to you guy for, uh, for being attacked by the aliens. Now, what would be really interesting to see is if this guy moved, um, be it just down the block or to a different country even, and, uh, got hit by a meteorite again. Well then in my mind, that just, that just cinches it. Some intelligent being has thrown rocks at him. Uh, from outer space that would be the real test Uh, I think I think for for the sake of science this man um, what is his what is his name here Um, Raddy Vojay Legik my apologies sir I I cannot pronounce any names uh, in general Uh, people just know this Uh, don't take offense but uh, uh, but guy in Bosnia you should move uh, just for a while don't have to sell your house or anything um, uh, move, get an apartment, um, move to, uh, move to Italy just, just for, just for one year, one year to live in an apartment in Italy and, uh, and see if you still get hit by rocks and make sure you stand outside and look up enough so the aliens can see you. And so they know you moved. Uh, I don't know exactly. You can't really send them a, like a, a forwarding address, uh, a little letter, but, uh, uh, but I think if you look up enough, if they're that good at throwing rocks at you, they can follow you. Maybe what you should do is walk looking up to wherever it is you're moving to to make no doubt that they saw you and they could watch you walk to the new place that you're living at and then stay there for one year. If that happens and you're still getting hit by meteorites, well, that proves something. I'm not 100% sure, sure what it proves, uh, but uh, but definitely, definitely something. Uh, the other story I wanted to cover... Uh, first off, well, there's actually a couple of stories, but, uh, the, the other, the other one that amused me greatly, uh, is, is this, uh, this gentleman here. Let me throw up a, a photo of this guy. Uh, this guy, uh, is a former Hollywood publicist. Uh, he's worked on a, a bunch of movies. Uh, he actually worked on Ghost, uh, the, the movie Ghost. He was a publicist for it. So we wrote, uh, you know, like, uh, after the movie comes out, these are the guys that write, uh, you know, hey, go see this movie, only they use fancier words than that. Um, he wrote a book. Uh, and the book was called, uh, let me see here, uh, Testament. And you can you can buy it online or on Amazon or, or on this guy's website. This guy's name is uh, Mark Russell Bell. Now, uh, this book, Testament, uh, is about... Um, People haunted by by ghosts, you know, not a, it's 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 a nonfiction book. It's more of like a him studying, uh, you know, people being haunted uh, by ghosts. During the writing of the book, he went to a uh, a home in Oklahoma because well, if you're writing a book about ghosts, you 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 want to go over, you know, to the uh, the old part of the United States. You know, you go to the the southern and southeastern states and. Well, Oklahoma's kind of over there. It's not quite too south, but it's not too north either. And it's kind of smack dab in there. Some old houses, so uh, likely to be haunted. Uh, so while he was there, he saw a bunch of things happen. You know, uh, things materializing out of, you know, out of thin air, just objects appearing. Uh, you know, uh, phantom voices from, from you know, beyond the, the grave or whatnot. Um, and uh, uh, he heard all that left a big impression on him so he goes back home to uh to los angeles and apparently the poltergeist followed him home uh liked him so much that uh he just went ahead and uh and followed uh mark russell bell uh all the way back home and uh and uh and continued to uh to haunt him so uh so this hollywood publicist uh found a poltergeist that really really doesn't like Hollywood publicist, I guess, is the the moral to the story. Uh, it's somewhat somewhat convenient. Uh, one might say that uh, uh, he uh, uh, he found uh, he claims to be having an actual poltergeist experience himself, being as he's writing a book about poltergeists and he didn't actually uh, uh, have uh, the poltergeist experience until after he was uh, writing the book. But uh, um, but hey, you know. Uh, Weirder things have happened, right? I mean, there have been plenty of uh, you know TV shows and movies uh, with uh, <coughs> with similar plots uh, coming out of Hollywood. Uh, so why not? I say uh, I'll give anyone the uh, benefit of the doubt. Oh, this guy also worked on uh, uh, Pet Cemetery, uh, Fire in the Sky, Scrooged, 
uh, Dead Again, um, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Forrest Gump, Fatal Attraction, Braveheart, and uh, some of the Star Trek films. So this guy's done, uh, you know, worked for a lot of uh, on a lot of pretty cool movies. He was a staff publicist at Paramount. Uh, doesn't sound like he is anymore. Um, so he makes the he makes the comment. Uh, he says uh, this is uh, this is Mark Russell Bell's statement. Uh, Although I didn't know it then, uh, working as a movie studio publicity writer while in my spare time researching and writing about the paranormal would provide me with a unique perspective upon finding myself experiencing a bizarre series of events beyond anything I'd seen on the screen. That's... I... I would like to disagree with him simply because he's a... uh, uh, works in publicity at a... uh, uh, or he was a uh, motion picture publicity guy in Hollywood, but uh, hey, why not, right? Uh, you can check that out uh, online. Decide for yourself on that one. Uh, now, with those two aside, because those two are, well, they're crazy stories. Uh, uh, be honest. I mean, you know, maybe there's there's obviously some truth to the like to the meteorite one. I mean, there's some physical evidence. There's there's freaking meteorites. I mean, we have those. They fell from the sky and they're they're on the ground now and then we can hold them and look at them and we know they're meteorites. Uh but uh but how they got there, etc. there's still there's still some 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 sort of a fantastical story around them. And then the poltergeist story, well that's that just boggles the mind. Uh, but uh, I thought we'd throw in a little bit of actual science here because, uh, well, I like actual science. So uh, what we've got here are just some just some very cool pictures that uh, I kind of want to want to show you guys here. Uh, got, got this up from uh, from CNN actually, uh, uh, just a couple of days back. Uh, now off the coast of Australia, uh, uh, so they've uh, they've done one of those deep sea uh, dives. Uh, and by deep sea dives, I mean uh, they went down uh, about 1,400 uh, meters below sea level. That's about uh, 4,500 feet down. So very, very, very far down uh, to the point where uh, I believe what's the point where there's no more light down there? Is it 2,000 meters? Something like that. Anyway, it's it's not exactly going to be bright and sunshiny down there. Uh, and what they what they they managed to take pictures. They got some really uh, uh, really light sensitive cameras. Uh, get down there to that depth and uh, and take some pictures and look around and and uh, record uh, what's uh, what's happening down there and what they came back with were some um, some pretty awesome pictures now some of the stuff we've seen before in in various forms not not terribly often but but uh, some of it is is uh, a bit on the new side uh, so this one uh, for instance is, is a little crustacean uh, that they found uh, off the coast of Australia there. Uh, for those listening to the audio version of the show, my apologies. Uh, the video version has much more stuff. Uh, and so I just kind of want to show you guys some of this. It's a little angler fish. Uh, we've seen angler fish before. Those things are, are creepy looking and, and scary beyond uh, beyond my, our wildest uh, dreams. Uh, but uh, I wanted to, to point it out because some of this stuff is so alien i mean it's it's almost more alien looking than what we come up with when we imagine aliens themselves uh this stuff is almost surreal in its in its out of this worldliness uh, i mean look at this thing i mean it, it is it looks like uh something from a from a video game it looks honestly it looks like something out of metroid uh my apologies if you don't get video game references, um, but like a, a, a good a good way to think about it is uh, uh, what's a Avatar? There, there we go. Let's let's go with the most popular possible reference at the moment. When you look at the movie Avatar, they came up with this wildly fantastical alien world where things were all glowy and such, and and the. And the people were tall and blue, and those were the aliens because they were from an alien world and so different. Um, the reality is, they looked so much more like us now. They look like a mild variation uh, in Avatar of what we have here on Earth, on land, with humans and, and the plants and animals that we have here. Uh, instead of they had dogs, but the dogs had an extra set of legs, or they had uh, rhinoceroses. Um, that had uh, big, uh, big scoopy tusks up front, like some of the dinosaurs we've seen before. We've seen skeletons of, and 
it just isn't that alien. It's actually fairly, it's fairly mundane. It's, it's just different enough to where we can point at it and say, aha, that's from another planet. But this stuff, this stuff, this stuff looks just wild. Uh, it looks like something uh, distinctly from another planet. Uh, that right there, that's a, that's a jellyfish. Uh, it's a deep red jellyfish. Uh, and, uh, this sea is, is this guy's a, a, a viper fish. Uh, some of these are just, just horrible looking. I mean, they look just straight up pure evil. Now, I don't know what that is. What is it in, in the human psyche where we look at all of these deep sea critters, uh, and we see them and we see anger, we see evilness, uh, I mean, I just, I just don't know anyone who's going to look at that and say, "Aw, uh, fuzzy bunny." I mean, it's just, there's, there's no fuzzy bunny there. These are, these are creepy, evil, super, like almost alien, mastermindy looking creatures that look like they're going to hug your face and put eggs in your chest. Uh, just, just, just crazy stuff. So I wanted to point that out because that's all very, very real, very, very alien, and. Well, it's right here. It's it's right here uh, on Earth. All right. Uh, well, one of the other topics I wanted to get to, uh, also uh, happening right here on Earth, uh, is uh, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, we've got uh, a gentleman here. Hey, there we go. Got his picture interview. There we go. Uh, John Podesta. Now, John Podesta was the uh, White House Chief of Staff. Uh, under uh, under President Bill Clinton, um, he uh, he was the final, I believe, president uh, chief of staff under under Bill Clinton, and he made a bit of a name for himself. Uh, he came out uh, and uh, 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 kind of kind of made a lot of friends in the in the UFO world uh, by uh, by saying that the United States government needs to release um, all the files uh, that could uh, bring uh, some light on. Uh, uh, on on anything relating to UFOs, on uh, on UFOs here on on American soil and uh, and abroad. Uh, so we made a lot of friends. Uh, a lot of people were like, "Yay, uh, we have we have an ally uh, in the, in the government." Obviously, he's not uh, he's not right in there anymore, but uh, uh, but he was. I mean, he was right there. He was the chief of staff to Clinton. Was coming out and saying, "We need uh, we need this. We need people to to have this information." Uh, and I find this interesting because, you know, every now and then we get someone from from the government that comes out and says, hey, let's let's release uh, these documents, this documentation, uh, much like uh, and we spoke about this uh, yesterday, uh, much like what's happening right now in the uh, in the EU. Um, but uh, uh, only only this is even even closer to uh, to the leadership level, because this is the chief of staff to the president of the United States of America. And he's coming out and saying that this stuff needs to be public. Uh, well, uh, he kind of he kind of uh, maybe soured uh, his people's relationship with him a little bit recently. Uh, he came out. Um, and. uh, uh kind of uh told uh will allen um who is a, a photographer or uh i'm not actually sure actually sure if he is a photographer but but his uh, his claim to fame is is some photographs of the uh of some ufos uh over capitol hill uh to uh to basically stop to stop doing that um and uh to stop asking for you know uh, you know uh release documentations uh for ufos um, and he says uh, that uh, Podesta, Podesta, this is, um, stated that uh, those reports being in the public would, and I quote, destabilize society. So there, there you go. He went from uh, we need to get these documents out there to we can't. If we release these documents, uh, it will destabilize society. Kind of, kind of interesting there. I don't know what it means. But I find it interesting that he's had this this big of a change. I mean, he's even this is a gentleman that's even pushed the Obama administration to release these documents uh, over recent years. I don't know what's changed. Uh, I don't know what's happened with his uh, with his viewpoint. Uh, I I don't know if he's seen something that uh, would suggest that uh, this is a bad idea. 
maybe someone has convinced him otherwise, but uh, he's definitely changed his mind. And uh, I think some people in the UFO research community probably aren't as thrilled with him anymore. All right, back onto the lighter side of things. Here is a totally awesome painting. This right here is a painting uh, of aliens making crop circles. And uh, I just quite dig this painting. Uh, I love the idea of aliens thinking it would be funny to land, get out of their flying saucers, walk over to fields of wheat, and uh, walk around in the fields of wheat and make cool patterns uh, just uh, for our amusement. Uh, if you like that painting, uh, you can pick it up, pick it up over at uh, printtreegallery.com. Uh, just like it sounds, printtreegallery.com. Uh, it's by a, uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Danny Rogers. Uh, I just I thought the painting was absolutely ridiculously adorable, uh, so I had to share it with you guys. I thought maybe some of you might uh, might dig it as well. Uh, now, uh, as a follow up to Monday's story about the UFOs over the airports in China, we uh, we finally have a, a little bit better uh, photos. Well, better is a uh, definitely a relative term here. Uh, here's what here's a photo of what is purported to be uh, the alien o o over that area. Definitely, uh, well, not exactly uh, that clear. If you didn't know you were you were looking at something that you thought should be an alien, you wouldn't really know it was supposed to be an alien. So that uh, it does look cool. It's a cool picture. It's a very grainy picture. I mean, it's at night. Uh, it's it's going to be grainy, but uh, I don't really know what I'm looking at here. You know, uh, there's a there's a little red line uh, along here, um, and uh, a big big uh, line of light, almost like the bottom of a of a ship would be illuminated. Uh, if you can kind of use your imagination on that, uh, so that's a that's a photo that's uh, purported to be there. Uh, and w luckily, we now have a little bit of video as well. Now, this one is kind of interesting, as this one is taken from a plane uh, that was actually diverted from. Uh, from landing at this particular airport because of the uh, because of the because of the supposed uh, UFOs, uh, as you can see them there, uh, th they're the uh, the dots of light uh, kind of hovering in the sky up there, uh, and of course I the gentleman or or lady who uh, recorded this kind of zoomed in there and uh, tried to get a, a little closer view on it. Uh, you know we just really don't have much. Something seems to be pulsating uh, up there. Um, perhaps spinning in a circle you can kind of imagine that or just having some strobing lights on it but it's it's again it's it's so far in the distance it's just a blurry light um it seems as though it's entirely plausible that this could just be a, a series of uh, military spacecraft uh, but it does seem to have that uh, that familiar uh pattern of three here we go back a little bit here of three three in a row of uh of lights uh that triangle pattern that uh that is so often common uh with uh with uh ufo sightings uh so it's uh, it's 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 worth looking at uh we've continued to not really have any real information out of china on this but then again if it uh if if it really were you know military military aircraft sorry uh that uh that were flying over chinese airspace uh China's not going to come out and say yes. Our military aircraft isn't it awesome? I mean, they're they're kind of secretive. That's that's kind of their thing. They're they're not exactly known for you know, blogging about everything that they write. They don't. They the, the Chinese government doesn't have a you know a, a Twitter account at uh, Twitter dot com. Whack, uh, totally secret Chinese government secrets. Um, so. So there's not there's not really a way to know on that one. Uh, hopefully, uh, as the uh, the days go on, we get some uh, some better footage and some better photos of this. Uh, so we can actually get a, a better look at what uh, what people are seeing um, and some more uh, more eyewitness accounts. I want to close out the day with uh, with something that is again uh, real science and real awesome. This is Mercury. That right there is a picture of the surface of Mercury that was recently taken uh, by uh, the Messenger uh, craft on its uh, third pass uh, around Mercury as it. Uh, as it goes about its, its mission, uh, and it just looks very, very cool. Uh, looks very, uh, very much like uh, many of the pictures we have of of, of our own moon, uh, and it's very, very cool. 
I just wanted to, to throw that out there. You can find pictures and, uh, and even some video and some uh, general information on what's been happening uh, with that, uh, that particular mission over on NASA's website. Uh, and uh, I highly recommend you do uh, because it is incredibly cool and it is incredibly real. Uh, verified, took pictures, crystal clear pictures of a planet uh, a long, long ways from here, much, much closer to the sun. It's just very cool. All right, that's all we've got for today. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the Jupiter Files here on Jupiter Broadcasting. You can find more Jupiter Broadcasting shows as well as this show over at jupiterbroadcasting.com uh, or you can find the latest version of this show also over at lunduke.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I am at twitter.com slash Brian Lunduke. Uh, just to make that easy to remember. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting. All sorts of contact links is what I'm saying. Uh, there's also, finally, we have a forum set up. Uh, so if you feel like chatting about these topics or any of the other topics uh, that would be uh, pertaining to uh, this show, uh, you can do so over at uh, jupitercolony.com. That's kind of the official forum, official hangout spot. For, for Jupiter Broadcasting. Uh, and stay tuned later on tonight for uh, for another episode of Jupiter at Night uh, this evening. Uh, we'll be rocking out right here at jupiterbroadcasting.com uh, slash live. And of course, this show happens every day of the week, every single day of the week. You can't get enough of it. 7 a.m. Pacific time. It's full of awesome. All right, everybody. I want you for uh, coming and hanging out with me, and uh, I will see you tomorrow morning.